Welcome everybody back to CCWC News Channel. This is the second episode that we're having. I'm Pastor Stephen Salinitri with Calvary Chapel Worship Center here in Newport Ritchie, Florida. And I have the amazing privilege of being with you today with Pastor Johan Van Ziel. Um, Pastor Johan, you just want to introduce yourself? Well, my name is Johan Van Ziel. I was born in South Africa, part of the South African Police Force for 27 years. The last couple of years as chaplain where I met the Lord Jesus Christ and I went to seminary, became a pastor and here I am today yeah. ministering the love of Christ. Amen. Well, such an honor to be here with you today. Um, this is one of my spiritual fathers, a mentor of mine for, for many years now and such an amazing man of God to look up to and, and follow the example of the Lord in. So uh, I'm very honored to be able to share this broadcast with you, with him and you today purpose of this channel is to just go over some of the things that are happening in, in the world today and kind of unpack them a little bit and we're going to parallel them with scripture and I want to see um, you know just what the Lord shows us in that so one of the main things that's coming up in in the news and I think that this is a major issue I don't want to share opinion or anything like that but just one of the things that are coming up and is real prevalent today is the 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 immigration issue where children are being separated from their mothers and their families as they attempt to come and cross the border into U.S. territory. And um, there's a lot of gang violence that is happening in El Salvador and, and different surrounding countries where the children and families are fleeing those countries to come tr try to come into America so that they can actually seek refuge. And uh, that's a huge issue that's going on right now. And I know that our president is working diligently to try to bring some resolution there that will work on both ends. But um, even two days ago on the 18th, there was, a, there was an SUV full of, um, I, I forget exactly what country they were, they were from, I believe Mexicans. But they tried to come over the border and they lost control of their vehicle and five of them died. There was 14 people packed into that SUV you know and uh, I think that you know just like the Bible says that there will be more violence in the end days you know we're gonna see an increase in cold hearts and and I think that even with these circumstances that are happening today I believe that it's evidence that we're close to the return of the Lord well we are very close I think it's closer than we think because if we look at the evidence uh, in the world today like Jesus said in the last days will be like in the days of Noah. Now if we go back to the Bible, we see what the days of Noah was. There was a great increase of violence. There was a great increase of crime, a great in increase of evil. And, and, and that is one of the reasons we also see when we look around at there's wars and rumors of wars, there's violence everywhere. So the signs of the coming of the Lord is very clear. Uh, another one, as the Bible says, there will be uh, other signs and, and we can see that there's earthquakes. The earthquakes has increased. We can see mm -hmm. this volcano, for instance, in Hawaii at the moment. Yeah. All that types of signs is, 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 is just escalating and it's just a sign of the coming of the Son of Man. And that is why when we, we look at the evidence of the scriptures, we can see that, that the end times are very close. Amen. And uh, I want to share the scripture with you. This is First, First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17. It says, Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. And this word, I was thinking about it. Um, it says that we will remain, those who are alive, and remain will be caught up together with them and we get that word uh, rapture from from this word here in the Greek which is actually harpazo which which means to be caught up in a state of ecstasy so I want you to if you could just elaborate a little bit on what is the rapture uh, to understand the rapture we must look at the whole purpose of God with with creation when God created man, he created man in his image. And then man fell away from God through sin, through rebellion against God. And what happened there is, is man lost 
the fullness of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God left man and the Spirit of the world came into man. So now we find man placed outside of the garden and we find man in a state of separation from God mm. but being joined to sin. Man became a sinner. He had a, a sinful nature. But the Bible teaches us that the love of God was so great that He gave His only begotten Son to become in the likeness of sinful flesh, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Not sinful flesh, but in the, likeness. in the likeness. He became a man and He walked here on earth just as we are walking today. But He was the, 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 uh, the image of God, the fullness of God, the presence of God in the form of a man, God Himself. And as He walked here on earth, the Bible tells us He never sinned once. He overcame everything we couldn't. Mm. He overcame sickness. He overcame the devil. He never fought men, but he fought the forces that was against mankind and not a certain nation or a certain people, but the forces that really kept man from God, and that was the forces of sin. So the Bible then says that, that Jesus became sin for us on the cross. In other words, he became something he was not. Mm. He was holy, he was pure, he was sinless. But he became sin for us. It's like a sponge that, that drank in all the sin and the evil that the devil brought in the lives of men so that he could become the escape for man. And on the cross when he died, he, he didn't need to die because he never sinned. But he, he died in our, in our place. So the Bible tells us now that when he died, that, that, that he took upon himself the sin of all mankind. And now... He has the keys of hell and death because the Bible says after he died, he went down into hell and death. He took the keys of hell and death from the devil, rose again on the third day. He ascended into heaven. He sits on God's right hand from where the Bible says he will come to, to, to fetch us to be with him. Mm. And that is why the rapture... Okay. You can stop right there. And that is why the rapture is, 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 is the fulfillment of the promise that Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm coming back to get you again. Mm -hmm. But now the question is, who is he coming to get back? Yeah. And, and now the Bible tells us that before he went to heaven, a man came to him by the name of Nicodemus. And, and he said to him, Lord, I, I know that you're from God because no man can do what you are doing. And then Jesus said to him, a funny thing, he says, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And he says, but God, I'm a big man. How can I go into my mother's womb? And Jesus said, Nicodemus, you don't understand. What's born of flesh is flesh. Your body is already born. Mm -hmm. But your spirit needs to be born again. Now, what's birth? Birth is the beginning of life. He said to him, Nicodemus, you must start living again. And he said to him, Unless a man is born again, he'll never even see the kingdom of God. Mm. Now, now, what was he saying to Nicodemus? Nicodemus, your spirit's dead. Yeah. Your spirit needs to receive life. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Bible teaches us if we come to Jesus and we confess our sin, it's not I've stolen or I've killed or whatever. It, it, it's Lord, my problem is not what I do, but who I am. I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. I need someone to save me Amen. from my sinfulness. Amen. And that is why when I come to God and I confess my sin, the Bible says God forgives me my sin, but that doesn't change me. Because Jesus said in one, uh, <coughs> excuse me, John writes in John 1 verse 11, he says, he came to his own, but they did not want him. But he said, all who received him, to them he gave power. Right. And that word power is not the Greek word dunamis. It's the Greek word exousia Amen. that means authority. Yes. He gives us the right wow. to become children of God. Amen. You see, so now when we come to God and we confess our sinful state, we say, God, I don't want to be like this. I want to be like you again. And, and I accept Jesus. What happens, the Holy Spirit now comes into my heart. And the Bible says, I become one spirit with God. And now my spirit doesn't source its existence through sin. My spirit sources its being through the spirit and, and the love of the living God. Oh. And that's why when you start being born again, <clears throat> you start living. Before I got born again, 
I was a drunk on my way to a suicide's grave. So when when I met Christ, I, I, I didn't exist anymore. I lived. Because now my life had a purpose. Amen. Because Jesus was my purpose. That's good. I never had a purpose before because my purpose was to become a general. <clears throat> you know, but, but that's the empty purpose because if you get there, where you're going from there. Right. But now when I met Jesus, I knew that I had something that wouldn't just last for now. It would last forever. And that's why I love him so much because when he came in, he changed me. He gave me a new heart. Yeah. He gave me a new desire. He gave me a new purpose. And, 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 and that is what it really is. It's, it's now the Holy Spirit becomes the source. The Bible becomes the source of what I am, what I do, where I'm going. And, 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 and that was the purpose of God. But now our problem is, is when we're born again, <clears throat> we still live in this body. And my spirit is perfect. My spirit is eternal. But now this body... It has to die because this body is temporal. It's part of this world. But now the Bible says this wonderful truth where it says in Romans where Paul says, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, it will quicken, it will give life to your mortal body. Right? So now the Bible teaches us that even though this body dies, like the body of Jesus died, but the body of Jesus had the perfect spirit of God in it. That was the key. That was like the Bible says, the spirit is our assurance. It's the deposit. It is, it is the seal mm. on our body that our body now belongs to God. Amen. Even though it is a sinful body, mm -hmm. but God has a plan for it. And the plan for it is the resurrection of the body. Like when Jesus' body was placed in the grave, the body decomposed. That's why they said, you know, they, they wrap him in the cloths and they put the oil of spike and art and, and upon it to, 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 to keep away the, the smell. But, but, it, it, but God had a plan because the, the sin was the cause of that corruption. Mm. But the righteousness of Christ, the love of God is the cause of the resurrection. Yeah. You see, and now the Bible tells us that because the world is in such a terrible state that no man can 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 fix the world. People try, but but it just makes it becomes worse and worse and worse. But God has a plan because Jesus is going to establish his eternal kingdom here on earth. So and, let me just ask you, so so you're saying that this born again experience, right, is what qualifies a person to partake of the rapture? Yes. Yeah, only, only those who are born again will be part of the rapture. Because what happens with the rapture is the Bible says Jesus will come back mm -hmm. to earth, right? And he will come uh, uh, before the tribulation. Before Jesus comes, comes back in, 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 in his, in, 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 to, to establish his earthly kingdom, the Bible teaches that, that seven years before the rapture will happen, when he will take away the church from from the earth when when those who are born again uh, those who are alive and like that scripture said those who are in the graves because Paul says that those who are alive won't be before those who are in the graves right. so the voice Bible says the archangel will call and the trumpet will sound mm -hmm. and the dead will be raised incorruptible so we will we will be raised, uh, even those who of, of us are alive when it comes. Uh, I believe that in that moment when, when the archangel calls, our bodies will die because it has to. The Bible says it's appointed on man once to die and then the judgment, right? But I believe it will be an instantaneous change, that the death will come by the change of the body from temporal to eternal. Mm. And of course, those who are in the graves, when, the, when they are raised, their bodies will be will be changed into eternal spiritual bodies like the body of Jesus. So bodies are going to raise from the dead. Yeah, sure. <laughs> of course. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, it's going to. But it, like the Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, he says a, a, a corruptible seed is sown. It's this body is corruptible, right? Mm -hmm. But he says an incorruptible body is raised. He says it's a temporal body. Our bodies only live for a couple of years, right? But an eternal body is raised. A body that will be like Jesus, 
that could go into heaven again, that can come into the Shekinah presence of God. You see, because um, when, when the rapture comes, uh, uh, the Bible says that we will be changed and we will meet the Lord in the air. But that will only be the born-again Christians. Because when we meet the Lord in the air, there's going to be chaos on earth. Can you think what will happen if all our unsaved friends and the people we work with, they say, well, where, where's Pastor Stephen? I don't know. He's not here. But we will meet the Lord in the air. And after the rapture, the seven years of tribulation will start. Well, people are going to vanish. Yes, but that's when the Antichrist will take over. Yeah. He is a, a, a incarnation of the devil into the form of a man because the devil copies God. He, he never created anything. He doesn't have anything. The only thing he can use is what God made. Mm. You see, so what happens now that as we have the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, so the devil uh, copies that. We find the devil, uh, he, 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 he's like God for the world. We find the, 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 the Antichrist, uh, he's, he's like Jesus. And then the false prophet, he represents the Holy Spirit. Well, not represents him, but, right. he, but he sort of he copies him, he mimics him. You see, so now we have the church away. But, but why can the Antichrist only come when the church is away? It's very simple. The temple of God was a holy place. Why? Because the Shekinah presence was God, of God was there, the revealed presence. Right. So now the temple was a holy place. Anyone that went into the holy place would die. Why? Because of the Shekinah presence of God. But now when we get born again, the Bible says we are temples of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So now the Shekinah presence, the revealed presence of God lives in us. And that is why the church is so immensely powerful in the spirit world. Because our power does not come from our own abilities or our own mental knowledge or understanding. But our power comes from the indwelling Holy Spirit. Amen. So now the presence of God is revealed. Yeah. I mean, when you and I go and we pray for the sick and God heals them, it's the Shekinah presence, the revealed presence of God is there. But when the rapture comes, the revealed presence of God will be taken away because the church because will, be gone. will be gone. Yeah, it's like the temple. When, 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 when the Spirit of God left the temple uh, 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 when the Romans came in 70 AD and they, they, they broke down the temple and they destroyed it, it was just a building because the cause of the presence, the, the, the Holy Spirit, the presence of God was gone. It was just a building. Hmm. You see, yeah. but now... <clears throat> When we are gone, the, 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 the Antichrist will have power because that restraining power, as the Bible calls it, the, 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 the revealed presence of God will be gone. It's not that God's not present because God's present everywhere, but that is His natural so, presence. Yeah. So now the revealed presence of God is gone. And when we are in, in that seven years, while we are in, 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 in the air with Christ, when the marriage supper of the Lamb will happen, um, they will be hell on earth because the devil will will lose all his power. And I like that. No, there's a lot of stuff that he's he's unpacking here for us to learn from. Um, one of the really cool ways I like to look at it is that when Jesus died on the cross, he died as one man. Yes. Right. But Jesus said, in mm. even in the Gospel of John, that when he went to be with the Father, that he was going to send the Helper. And so he multiplies, even though he died as one body, he multiplied his, his presence in us. You know, as born-again believers, through the, whole, through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, like you mentioned, you know, now Christ lives through us, through you, through me, through all these born-again <coughs> believers in the world. You have the power of God living through you, through the Spirit of God. You know, so even though he died as one body physically, he has a spiritual body that's alive, that's comprised of many members. Yes. You know, that are working together. And I think that that's an amazing thing. So, so when the church gets raptured, when they get snatched away from earth, then you're saying the end will come. 
So what, what's the purpose of the rapture? Why are we raptured? The rapture is, is to take the, the church out of the equation for the seven years of tribulation that is to come where the Antichrist will rule. He will rule the earth, the Bible teaches us. The first three and a half years, <clears throat> the Jews will accept him as the Messiah. But then they will find out that he's not really the Messiah because he will, he will present himself as the savior of the world. He will present himself, he's come to bring peace. But then the Jews will also be persecuted. Um, and, the curse, uh, and, 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 and the people that, that stay behind, those who've learned about Christ and never accepted him, they will realize that what we preach is the truth. That's good. And they that, that are here on earth then will call on the name of Christ. But they will, they will be killed for their faith because the Bible says that those who don't receive his mark. Um, now, exactly, we don't know what it is, but most probably it, it will be a tattoo or, a, or, or, or something else that will represent a, a chip or something believe, like yeah. that. Yeah. There's a lot of different <clears throat> but, but that is that is immaterial. The thing is just that he will, he will, he will have a mark, the Bible says, the mark of the beast. There will be a mark placed on those who accept him as he's their savior. Like we receive Jesus, they will believe in him and they will believe the lie. Mm -hmm. And now those who, 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 who've known the truth and realized that they didn't receive Christ, well, some of them at that moment will say, well, uh, well, well they were right. And they will call on the name of the Lord. That's what I was going to ask you. <clears throat> yeah, they will call on the name of the Lord. And, and, and the Bible says anyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But, but at that moment, they, 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 they will receive Christ, but they will be murdered. They will be martyred for their own sin wow. uh, and, and, and for their acceptance of Christ, right? So now, <clears throat> that seven years, uh, the Antichrist will take over until the second coming of Jesus, where the Bible says that Jesus will return and we will be with him at this time. So, so, sorry for interrupting, but I just want to <coughs> make sure it's clear. So, so people that are left behind when the church is removed, when they're raptured, they'll they'll have an opportunity to come to Christ by faith. Yes, yeah, the they, they will have a chance. But so there's still hope. There's hope, but the thing is, you can't put your your hope in that because if people can't believe when the Holy Spirit is here where the Bible says he convicts of sin, of judgment, and of righteousness, right? He, he tells us we, we sinners, right? Mm -hmm. He tells us there's righteousness in Christ, right? And he tells us of the judgment to come. Mm -hmm. Now, if he's not there, I don't know how, how many will believe because how are they going to believe? Because if there's no one to convince them. But I do believe that there's some that carried the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You know, people like here in the church, not everybody is saved, but people who sat under the anointing and, and, and knew the truth, but wasn't uh, uh, willing to, to, to repent. Mm. Uh, they will realize, man, I missed it. Mm. And then call on the name and say, I, I would think it would be something like this. Jesus, you know, I, I'm sorry I rejected you, but please save me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it will cost them their lives. Yeah. Well, there's going to be some crazy things happening that are definitely going to encourage people to to get on their knees and repent before the Lord. Especially when you when you find out your friends are <coughs> have disappeared and are lo no longer there. And I think the rapture of the church is going to be the greatest catastrophe that's ever existed on on the face of the earth. Uh, it will be a start of the day of of. Of, of tribulation like the Bible says that there's never been before and I know that there's different theories too there's the pre-trib mid-trib post-trib um, I don't want to get into what theory you know uh, we are of the opinion of but I want can you just kind of explain the differences between them <clears throat> well there's people that believe that Jesus will come before the 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 the, the the, this time that the Bible talks about the time where Rachel's children will, will cry the cry um, 
the, the, but uh, most of the church believe in pre-trip that before the tribulation comes we will be taken in there. There's some that believe that it will be in the mid-trip after the the, 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 the Jews realize that the Antichrist is not the Christ but he is the Antichrist mm -hmm. and then of course for the poor Jews all hell will break loose and then there's that says that no there is no uh, a, 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 a rapture there is only the second coming of Christ after the after the, the seven years mm -hmm. that's that's the three viewpoints but that is not the, the one that most of the church envelops is the one of, of that Jesus comes back. Now I, I can't see the other two because the Bible says in, 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 in Thessalonians that the Antichrist can't be revealed until he who keeps him back is taken out of the way. Mm. And the only one that can be is the Holy Spirit. That makes sense. That's only the yeah. church. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And uh, another way to look at that too is uh, if the church was to stay during the Great Tribulation, which is a time of judgment, where the wrath of God is poured out upon planet Earth, then wouldn't you say that that's the church going through the judgment of God? You know, and if the church goes through the judgment of God, then what was the purpose of Christ for the church? The wrath of God was poured out on Christ, you know, and judgment, uh, you know, uh, an object can't be judged twice. You know, if the wrath of God has already been poured out on Christ and we're in him and he rose from the dead, then how could we be appointed to judgment again? You know, so that's another thing I think we can consider when looking at those three different viewpoints. But, well, Pastor Johan, it's been an absolute blessing to have you here today. And uh, we've been truly blessed by having him join in on this session. And just like we discussed earlier, if you haven't um, placed your faith in Christ and maybe you're not 100% sure that if you were to die today that you'd go to heaven. I want to give you the opportunity to surrender your life to Christ. And if that's you, I just want you to pray with us. And when we pray today, it's not the prayer that saves you. It's your heart. And uh, it's your heart condition. And I want you to pray with us and just believe God that he can rescue you from your situation and even from your own life. So, Pastor Johan, would you uh, lead us in prayer? Sure. Let us just bow our heads. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe that you are God. I believe that you are God. You became a man. You became a man. And died in my place. And died in my place. On Calvary. On Calvary. And Lord, I ask you. And Lord, I ask you. To please forgive me. To please forgive me. For all of my sin. For all of my sin. And I invite you into my heart and life. And I invite you into my heart and life. Please come in. Please come in. And change me, Lord. And change me, Lord. The way you want me to be. The way you want me to be. I receive you now. I receive you now. As my personal. As my personal. Savior and Lord. Savior and Lord. And now, Lord, I know. And now I know. I have eternal life. I have eternal life. And I will be with you forever. And I will be with you forever. Amen. 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 Praise God. So if that's you, if this is your first time praying that prayer, I want you to click down below. Um, reach out to us on Facebook. Look at the description below. And please hit like on this, uh, on this broadcast. Thank you again, Pastor Johan. We love you so much. You're amazing. It's my privilege. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining in, and we'll catch you guys next time. God bless you.